Edward Yang's final film before his untimely death, Yi Yi, is perhaps his finest film, though it is offered the least recognition. While Yi Yi released around the world and won the award for best director at the Cannes Film Festival in 2000, it did not release in Yang's home country until 2017, which was also the setting for the film in Taiwan, and a decade after Yang's passing. This saddened Yang as his target audience for his film didn't get to see how beautiful it was until he was gone. Yi did however get recognition around the world because of how relatable it was to just about anyone. It's about life in its essence. The film opens with a marriage, has a birth in the middle, and ends in a funeral. These are all quintessential moments everyone experiences, no matter who you are. The film also surrounds a middle-class, multi-generational family living a pretty average urban life, which when the film released was becoming more applicable to people everywhere, whether you lived in Taipei, where the film was set, New York City, Beijing, Tokyo, etc. From this film, it's pretty clear Yang had quite the fascination with modernization, or more specifically, urbanization. A term which defines the kind of transitional modernization Yang liked to focus on is reflexive modernity. This refers to modernization which radically opposes traditionalism, reconstructing society in a totally different direction from where it came from, reflexive meaning to completely turn around. The way Yang visualizes reflexive modernization in Yi is by using the reflective surface of glass and its mirror-like quality while remaining translucent. <laughs> We often look through windows at our protagonists as they look out at the vast city they live in, which we see through reflection. Us literally seeing urbanization in this reflective way symbolizes this concept of reflexive modernity which Yang is obsessed with. Taipei is no longer the place he once knew as a child. It's being radically reshaped and it's happening fast. This also in part is an autobiographical quality this film has, though not autobiographical about Edward Yang, but it is autobiographical about the city of Taipei. This gets at another big quality of Yang's film. It's less about the characters, rather it's more about the world they live in, this rapidly changing and expanding modern world. This is reminiscent of modernist filmmakers like Antonioni or Ozu, who were both filmmakers who were more focused on world building and creating characters who didn't necessarily have a ton of depth, but those who underwent a new form of alienation arising from the dissolution of the traditional values and familial or clan relations that had structured social life even during history's darkest moments. The theme of alienation in this film is both thematically and stylistically similar to Antonioni's representation of isolation and alienation from society in his 1966 film, Blow Up. Both Yang and Antonioni use a method of filmmaking called Temps Mort, or Dead Time. This is the attempt to capture the fullness of life both within and beyond the frame of a film. It often involves pulling the camera back, keeping it distant from the characters on screen, allowing you to see a fuller frame, and not to be too emotionally invested in the moment or the characters on screen, but rather the bigger picture. Again, both of these directors are less focused with the depth of the characters in their films, but aim to make them realistic, believable, and relatable. Yang's goal with this film is less about making a big blockbuster hit, but it is to help people mentally detach themselves from society for a couple hours with the art form that helps people do that best, film. Yang believes that there is no art form that is more realistic than film. It can capture anything that we experience in real life and even make us feel as though we've experienced things we haven't. In this film, while making us aware of the capability film has to teach us about society, death, love, and other tenets of human life, he also metaphorically shows us how difficult it is to see the big picture, to understand everything, because people are subjective. This is of course another big theme in Antonioni's Blow Up, which lines up quite well with this film. Our subjectivity paired with alienation is what makes it hard to see the truth. You'd think that would be the best way to discover what the meaning of life is, or at least to understand more than you already do, but Yang is convinced that most people lack self-perception. 
People are so distracted by this radical reconstruction of society that they forget to think deeply about themselves and the things that should be important to them, like ill loved ones, for example. <laughs> Instead, people are busy trying to adhere to societal norms and strive to be financially successful as the world becomes more commercial and capitalized. This forces people further into a state of alienation and causes them to lose their individuality. Like in Blow Up, Thomas doesn't really have a unique sense of identity. All he cares about is success as an artist. Wish I had tons of money. And I'd be free. Subjectively designating things as meaningful. And Antonioni leaves viewers with a message that as long as you are alienated, your subjective opinion is meaningless. This is a very modernist take on cinema, being more focused with the message of the film than the narrative. The way that Yang deals with this theme of people lacking self-perception is with probably the wisest character of the film, the young Yang Yang, who Yang clearly modeled after himself. Yang Yang is very perceptive of the people around him and takes note when people are happy or sad and always curiously tries to learn more and help others. Yang Yang is probably the least subjective character in the film as he is aware of people's struggle to see the big picture of life and wants to help enable people to self-perceive, which is exactly what Yang wants people to do after watching this film. Here is where Yi Yi delivers a unique message which Blow Up lacks. Yang believes that with a little bit of help, one can get a fuller picture of themselves. In Blow Up, the photos Thomas takes of the supposed murder are never made clear to us as the viewers of the film. Thomas's subjectivity grows stronger when he blows up his images and he only sees what he wants to see. But Yang Yang's photography allows people to see something which they can't normally see, but is there, helping them see what's objective. This is what? Give me. Hey. 这是我耶,这是我后脑勺耶。Yang suggests that when you are alienated and in your own head, no matter what you convince yourself, you cannot see the full truth but only part of it. You need to be assisted to be more self-perceptive, and then you can see the bigger picture or the full truth. What Yang Yang does for others in this film with photography is what Yang does for us with his film as a whole. He wants people to reflect about their lives from an objective point of view during a time where we are losing our identities to a rapid societal shift which consists of expansion and devaluing the individual. Our subjectivity and alienation is allowing us to lose focus on the bigger picture. We're forgetting what's really important and therefore losing sight of the truth. Antonioni delivers this message in a grim way, suggesting that we are literally worth nothing alone and detached from others. A sad reality. But Yang tries to cherish that sense of alienation while he slanders it at the same time. Alienating yourself intentionally can sometimes be a good thing. Yang believes art can help us see what's objective, but it can also detach us further from society in a beautiful way, like with music. She didn't like music. Many people think that music is useless. We cannot get any money from listening to music. She also thinks this way. So she left you? No. Oh. I decided to leave. The people who think music is useless are those who are already alienated by society and are only focused on financial success, adhering to the status quo, but it is important to take a step back and be uplifted every once in a while and be transported to a fantastical dreamlike space where the rest of the world doesn't matter. The end of the film is when Yang most concretely shares his goal with Yi Yi through the words of Yang Yang at his grandmother's funeral. I want to tell people things they don't know, show them stuff they haven't seen, it'll be so much fun. While we are detached from the real world while watching this film and taken to a new fictional space, observing the lives of people we don't know personally, this allows us to take that necessary step back away from our own lives to get a clearer, more profound image of it from afar. Oh.